everyone, it's Dawn here. Welcome back to Bridal Business. Thank you for joining me again this week. I have a guest with me. We're kicking off a series of uh, guest interviews with um, some amazing educators that are in and out of our industry, most of which have had some kind of experience in the hair and beauty industry, but then are um, either doing something different, something that complements it, um, or are doing it alongside their beauty business. So I'm really excited to introduce my guests that are coming up over the next uh, few weeks. My first guest today is Danielle Murray. She is the owner and operator of Hello SEO. And Danielle has been actually in our industry, which is super important to me. I try and bring you guys people that have actually had experience in the beauty industry. She was actually a 20 year hair and makeup artist. Um, she came, uh, she put her brushes down about four years ago, and now she has a company called Hello SEO, which is helping you guys get found on Google. But I'm going to get her to tell you exactly what she does and how she does it. Danielle, welcome to the show. Hi, Dawn. Thank you so much for having me. And I am so excited to be talking to other hair and makeup artists. That's my entire background and yeah, I'm really excited to be able to help some of you get more business and more money. Yay, that's what we love. Now, Danielle, tell us just a little bit about yourself. First of all, how do you get started with hair and beauty? How did that come about for you? And then tell us a little bit about how you then transitioned to what you're doing now. Okay, so I started my hairdress. I was a hairdresser. I started my apprenticeship in 1988 and worked in a salon and um, and there were only parts of hairdressing that I liked and that was basically upstyling. All I wanted to do was do the blow wave, do the upstyle, because back in 88, women used to come in every week for their blow waves and sets and um, hairdos and going out and chignons and all that beautiful stuff. And um, so I left hairdressing, it was not giving me enough and I was a lazy hairdresser when it came to colouring and cutting. And, um, and I worked in retail for a while. And I also um, studied beauty therapy. And again, I didn't like being stuck in the salon. But in beauty therapy, I was introduced to makeup. Mm. And then in 2000, I had this, I didn't want to work in four walls anymore. And I loved hairdressing and I had friends getting married left, right and centre and they all asked me to do their hair. And I said, oh, I'll have a go at your makeup as well. So I slapped a bit of makeup on, but I did these amazing hairstyles and I thought, right, I need to up my makeup game. Went and studied makeup with at Napoleon Academy in Melbourne. That was the all and end all in 2000. And um and from there it started. So I got a job at Star Shots, which was a glamour photography studio. And yeah, that was yeah. the best way because I could see my makeup work up on this massive screen and you could see every crooked brush stroke of line. So it made me a lot more diligent, a lot faster. And that's how it started. So I basically was a hairdresser who wanted to make more money. So I realised I needed to learn to do makeup. And that's how I've always classed myself as a hairdresser that did makeup. And that's how I was constantly busy because I could do both. And I was stronger in hair than what I was in makeup. But, you know, yeah, that's, that's how it started. How funny because I, I, so I started the other way around. So I started in beauty and I did photography and special occasion makeup as part of my beauty diploma. And I was the same as you. So I liked doing the photography side of things because it made me be able to perfect my makeup game. Having said that, I didn't really feel like I was a very good makeup artist, but I'd learned to do, because I worked in a beauty salon um, for hairdressers, most of the hairdressers I found, they didn't want to do the updos. So they, they taught, it. yeah. So they taught, they were like, how, you know, so you know how you're doing makeup, can we teach you to do the updos? And so they started to teach me to do the updos. And then I went on to do, um, a few courses in updos so I was a makeup artist who learned to do hair funnily enough so I was the, the opposite of you mm. and um, yeah so I ended up doing updos and then I, I, I but like you I felt like I, that was my strong point I was much better at hair than I was at makeup um, so I would yeah same though it's I, I like what you said about being able to do both 
because having both of those skills definitely helps us get booked I think and, and I'm not saying that every hairdresser needs to be a makeup artist and every makeup artist needs to be a hairdresser but I don't think that it's um uh I, I don't think that it's something that you should shy away from I think it's something that that hair and hair and or beauty pros should try it out you know just do a short course for example we're going to be talking I'm going to be talking to Gretchen um Mm. Mauer coming up soon and uh, she's got uh, she's got a system that she teaches and it really can help uh, makeup artists learn hair so um, yeah I love what you said about being kind of dual skilled there and, and actually then being able to be booked because you know if the, a bride doesn't want makeup for example then you can do the hair if they don't want the hair you can offer the makeup service. Oh, a hundred percent I think for every makeup artist I mean hairdressers can always get work Mm. Makeup artists struggle getting work, so you need another skill. And hairdressing and or something like nails or spray tanning. Yes, so you've got good. those brides during the week and then you've got your weekend weddings. So makeup artists really do need to know a couple of skills so they can be busy the entire week. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think with the makeup artistry as well, I think it's perhaps because they're churning out so many of them from mm -hmm. the beauty schools and cosmetology schools around the world. Um, you know, there is a lot of competition out there and, and really you've got to be seen to just just being that something you want to be able to position yourself. And we'll talk about that when it comes to to your, to your new venture um fairly new venture <laughs> it's been a few years but we'll talk about that but yeah I think you've got to position yourself in the right uh to, to get the right opportunities and that does come then with being perhaps multi-skilled in some ways and and that's not to say that makeup artists uh don't get work because they do but it, again it's just about positioning themselves in the right way and and there are obviously you and I we obviously both love bridal and that's that's I went into bridal and special occasions as well that became my complete passion I you know I had a bridal business business or still technically still do have a bright up business it kind of came to a halt last year um but um having a, a really concentrating on that niche meant that uh, for me to upskill and do both hair and beauty both hair and makeup um made a lot of sense but let's talk then about what you do now first of all tell me what made you decide to kind of like stop doing the makeup artistry was it was it like just sort of a natural progression of I'm, I'm progressing to something different or did you just have enough what what made you sort of change okay so I'll be quite honest so I moved from Melbourne to Sydney so I had to restart my whole career from Melbourne to Sydney mm. And then I was in Sydney for five years and I built up, you know, quite a good business. I was doing a lot of really good stuff, a lot of commercial work, which I loved, um, some TV work and still the weddings. And then we moved to Brisbane and the thought of having to re-network, yeah. re-establish and also cope with Brisbane humidity, I thought, no, 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 no. So I take my absolute hat off to any makeup artist who can do hair and makeup exceptionally well in any humid climate like um, Queensland or in the States like Florida or somewhere like that, I absolutely take my hat off to you because it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. So, and that's how it happened. So I thought, right, I need to make money. Um, I'm going to make it online somehow. And I started selling on um, Amazon and realized that I needed to bring in extra traffic. So I had a website and I, I needed more people to buy my stuff. And that's when I realized, um, you know, that whole SEO word was mentioned. I didn't know anything about it. The thought of it just confused me. And I bought a course and I looked at it and I started crying. It was so confusing. I didn't understand any of it. And slowly but surely, um, I found some really some really nice guys who were in an online group and I could ask a question and they didn't laugh at me, they didn't belittle me and they helped me make sense of it and that's what I did. And then I realised that the type of businesses that I, um, you know, so I'm still selling on Amazon and it's still, it does pretty well, but I realised that I wanted to help more local businesses get found in a Google search. and. Um, and that's how I came here. So I'm helping mainly trades, mainly guys on the tools to get more business. 
it's funny, I approached a few hair and makeup artists last year if they wanted some SEO help and, um, and they did, but I don't know, the whole artistic creative side of them made them quite unsure about what changes and how, how their visual website needs to look. So I'm hoping that um, by being here today, I can actually talk about their Google My Business, which yeah. is um, a tool that Google gives you for free and it will bring you more business if you can utilise it. And you don't have to make massive changes to your website if you don't want to. But by concentrating on your Google My Business, you will get um, more business without having to do an expensive website or massive website overhauls, which most hair and makeup artists do need to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when it comes to um, a lot of the websites um, for hair and beauty pros, one of the things that I have always said is that it's really hard because as creators, we want everything to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that you go so far into making something beautiful that it becomes not practical. And a lot of uh, beauty, the, the ones that I've seen and I've looked at, I've, I've sort of said to them, there's too much, there's too many words on this page. There's too, you know, and, and it's great to have a gallery, but I also feel like galleries perhaps are a little bit more redundant now. And that's what Instagram's for, you know, be loading up a hundred odd photos on a website. Brides won't hang around, you know, your clients won't hang around that long on your, on your websites. And what you need is a mechanism, which we'll talk, uh, which we'll talk about, which is to be found. So it's in a search number one, and then when they get to your website, you need to give them something straight away that tells them exactly what, who you are, how you're going to help them, and then how they can perhaps even help themselves a little bit too, by giving them something that they go, Oh, I need that. This person's mm -hmm. fantastic. So Let's talk about, um, I, I know that um, I'm having you come and do a class. For those of you that don't know, um, I'm running the uh, Ultimate Bridal Business Blueprint four day live event, which is in May. And Danielle is going to be running a class um, on this exact subject, on getting found uh, on Google and making sure that you guys are found. So she's actually running a class, go to becomeabridemagnet.com to find all of the details. I'm really excited for Danielle's class because she'll be taking you through a bit more step-by-step -step how you can actually do this. Um, and she's got some great things that she's going to be sharing with you about that. We'll talk about that more at the end um, of today's show. But let's talk, Danielle, about um, the Google My Business side of things. Practically speaking, what does Google do for our local businesses? Like what's the benefit of it? And perhaps what are you seeing with the tradies? Like what what are they doing that are that's kind of like showing you that, you know what, this is actually something that can really help local businesses? Because I think this is important. I think that there are so many people out there that talk about um, SEO and, and Facebook ads and, and being found on Facebook and, and Instagram, which is, I think, you know, these things all work, but it's really important to know that it's for a local business and not just an online business. So what are the sort of, what are you seeing coming from your tradies and um, what could the local businesses, the hair and beauty pros do when it comes to being found more on Google? Okay. So, so the Google My Business is a separate um, tool that Google gives you. So if you go on your phone and you type in a query like local plumber, you'll have the map area. So yeah, that yeah. is the Google My Business where the Google Maps are. And this is really important. So basically you set, to set up a Google My Business, it's free. Now to set it up, you need to be able to receive a postcard. So you need to have a, you know, a post a street address that yeah. they can yeah. mail you the postcard, but you don't have to show your address. You can actually be a service-based business, so your address is hidden, and that's where you do not see the little pins on the map. You know, when you go to a map, you see these little red pins everywhere. Well, that's someone's business that is on display. So if you're a hairdresser in a salon, you want that pin. You want people to know exactly where you are so they can find you on the map. But for a makeup or a hairdresser that's doing mobile, you don't put your address to be shown so you won't get a pin. But Google knows where you are because you put in an address 
that has, and that's where they tie you to. And the Google My Business radius is around between, it can be anywhere between sort of five kilometres to 20 kilometres, okay? Which is so the perfect distance for hair and yeah. beauty pros to travel to, to do weddings. I mean, and I know some, some go further away, um, but a lot of the times you find that a bride, for example, or even someone for a special occasion, special occasion people will pick somebody that's around the corner because they don't want to either yes. have to travel too far or they just want somebody that's local. A lot of the times with uh, brides, they will Google someone that's local again, but they may have a wedding that is further away. So at, on the day, the, the uh, hair and beauty pro may have to go a bit further, but that's, Absolutely. they'll pick someone within that 20 case. Absolutely. And that's where it's really vital is if you are working in an area that say on the Gold Coast and you've got girls from Melbourne looking for a makeup artist on the Gold Coast, then you need to make sure that you've got Gold Coast on your website somewhere. Uh, the amount of websites that I've looked at for hair and makeup artists, and they don't even have um, the city that they work from. You know, it's just someone, so-and-so hair and makeup artistry. And it's like, what city are you in? Yes. So you really need to, you need to know. So, and that's so Google knows. And it will, you will show up in those searches like Gold Coast hair and makeup artist or, you know, Margaret River hair and makeup artist, those tourist destination spots. So your Google My Business is linked is linked to that address and you should connect a website to it. So there's an area where you can connect a website. If you don't have a website, which you should, you can always connect a Facebook page to it as well. Okay. Wow. So always connect your Google My Business. Now it's free to set up. To set it up, if you don't have a Google My Business, get moving now. You just just Google, Google my business, okay? And it will set you through it. So you put in your name of your business, um, you put in your details, what hours you work. And then the most important part of your Google my business is it will ask you what category are you in? So if you're a makeup artist, you will put makeup artist. If you're a hairdresser, there is a category called mobile hairstylist, okay? Now, you can also put in some extra sub categories. And this is where it gets, this is where people lose their money hand over foot because you might be a makeup artist, but you might also offer hairstyling. So you can go and put in an extra category called mobile hairstylist. Now, did you know that there's actually a category called um, wedding, oh, what's it called? I think it's called wedding provider. Okay, if you're if you're doing brides, you need to put in that you're a wedding provider and you, all right. So the hire cars and the florists and all that are doing the same thing as well. But you're getting found for, you know, wedding, wedding hair and makeup because you've got that wedding in there. Google's going to know that you provide a wedding service. There's also different categories in there. Like there's eyebrow bar. If you offer eyebrow shaping, put in eyebrow bar, mm. you sell makeup. There is a category in there called cosmetic supplier. Hell, I'm supplying lipstick to my brides. I'm going to put that in there. So make sure that you fill in those additional categories that relate to your business. They don't have to be 100%, but they've got to be pretty close to what you do. So make sure you fill in every category that relates to your business. And there's a really good tool um, called Plepa. P L E P R dot com. And there is a Google My Business um, category tool. So if you type in that you're a makeup artist, it gives you all the list of related categories that you need to put into your Google My Business. Ah, okay. Um, That's really good. So P L E P R. Uh, dot com plepper yeah so it gives you so that's going to give you the categories that you can use in the google my business yeah so you type in australia so every country is different yes every country has different categories and they can remove them all of a sudden out of nowhere like i've got a um i was looking after a car detailer and the car detailing categories disappeared so i've had to put him down as a hat car wash which okay. is not what he is but it's the closest I could get to him. Yeah. So they do sometimes remove categories as well. 
So that is the first and most important thing is to make sure that you select the right category for what you are and then select extra categories. Mm. The other thing is to put in your hours of business. Make sure that you put in photos. Make sure that you put in your logo. Okay, so the more you use the Google tools, the more Google will think that you're, you know, a well-established business. You're using all their tools, so they're going to give you a better chance of being found. And then the second most important thing is your Google reviews. And, and this is where artists really struggle is a, you know, feedback can be absolutely horrible sometimes. It can be just devastating when you hear feedback that someone's not happy, they haven't booked you, you know, and you're always so critical of your work, um, you know, being published and you just cringe at some of the stuff you've pr produced, but you know, everyone has a bad day or you've just got a client that's totally unreasonable or they've got super bad taste. But what you have to do is you have to be really proactive in asking for Google reviews. Not only will the Google reviews protect your business if you do get a random one star or two star or three star review, and it will happen. Mm. Everyone's going to get a bad review. Unrealistic bride. You might have a really dodgy competitor who's trying to take down all their all their competition, um, or you might just have someone accidentally randomly just click one star when they're going through your profile. It sometimes happens. Oh, well, I've had people uh, before that have just put a bad review on, and I don't even know who they are. And then when you actually do a, a, a sort of search on them, you realise they're on the other side of the world, or they're in a remote country somewhere and they're just doing it because they're a keyboard warrior and I have to say I noticed something one of the beauty forums one of the makeup forums they were they said oh you know what do we do when we've got like a one-star review and I didn't even this isn't one of my clients like what I don't know why they're giving me a bad review I don't know this person um but you can I I, I think you can like you were saying about being protected I, I think this was a Facebook one and I think you can actually appeal to Facebook to have them removed um, so there is a report button and sometimes google will remove it especially if it's using really foul language or um you know stuff that should not be online but there's no guarantee it's going to be removed yeah so if you get a bad review you must reply to it if you leave a bad review up there with no response then you are acknowledging that whatever they've said is true yeah Okay, so if you get a bad review and it's some random that you don't know, just say, hi there, I have no record of ever doing your hair and makeup. Are you sure you've got the right business? If, if it was us, can you please contact us so we can try and find out what happened? Yeah. Okay, so you're showing really, really, really good customer service. All right. Mm. If it's some hormonal bride that just, you know, for whatever reason, nothing you did worked, you still respond to her and say, I am so sorry that, you know, you were not happy with what we did. We, we, you know, we discussed this at the trial. We made sure that we put on the extra coats of foundation. We did the extra eyelashes. Please contact us so we can arrange for um, additional an additional service or a free makeover or something. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't want her back in your chair for a million dollars. You do not want to see her again. But when I'm online looking at reviews, the first thing I do is look at the bad reviews. Yes, and I think okay. everyone does that. So a one-star review is the best opportunity you have to show off your amazing customer service skills. So if you have, if you've got this bride doing a rant and she's left you a one-star review and you respond beautifully and offer to help and to fix up and apologize, people are going to read that and go, wow, they're really good, aren't they? Yeah. She sounds like a horrible client, but look and then how it's only one been. And it's only like one review then out of the other 50 that have all been, you know, four and five stars. So, and, and it's just showing that you're, you know, it, it, it's showing that it you is, kind of, I guess, random and that you are, and that you do, yeah, you, that you do actually care about, about what they so, thought. So don't go to pieces when you get a one-star review. It mm. sucks, but mm. you can turn it around into something amazing. And then the next step is to be proactive and make sure that every happy bridal party 
you get a review from. Okay, so you're doing your hair and makeup. You got five girls sitting around and they're all on their phones and they're loving their makeup. They're loving themselves sick. <laughs> and they're looking at them, they're taking selfies. <laughs> hey girls, while you're there, can you leave me a review on Google? Mm. Hello. <laughs> You may not get the bride leaving your review because yeah. she's so stressed out and, yeah. you know, then off on a honeymoon, but you've got the bridesmaid sitting there. Yeah. Now, so, and this is how it all happened is so I'm helping these businesses get into the um, Google map pack and they're in the three pack, but they don't have the reviews. So you think about it, you're shopping online. The first thing you do is you read the reviews. You want to make sure that you're not being tricked or duped by that company. You want to make sure that when you spend your money or hire or book someone, that it is the right person to do. And you're reading the reviews and you want, and they, people will read about 10 reviews, okay? They'll look at the bad first, and then they'll read the last, you know, eight or nine, the latest reviews. So you do not want reviews from three years ago. They mean nothing. Mm. You want reviews every month coming in like clockwork. So... They've looked at your review. So they've say three local makeup artists that in Brisbane that could potentially do my hair and makeup. One's got 55 star reviews. One's got three, three stars and the other one's got zero reviews. Which mm. one are you going to choose? Which yeah. one? You're yeah. going to go straight to the one who's got 50 reviews. You're going to click through and you're going to have a look at their website. Okay. The one who's got zero reviews, you're not going to click through. So. This And then what happens is when you're using all the Google tools and you've got all these reviews coming in, okay, it's showing Google that you're busy, you're proactive, you're trustworthy. And then the secret source is when people click from Google My Business to your website, you've just indicated to Google that your website is click worthy and it's called click through rate. Okay, yeah. you're proving to Google that your site is worth clicking on. So therefore, if someone types in local makeup artist, it's going to show your site more often because more people click through to you than your competition. So that's why Google reviews are so important. It will boost your local rankings and it will then further boost it by making you more attractive and more clickable so Google will show you more often. So get reviews. Seriously, it will change your business. And you can get reviews on Google, on Facebook, on Trustpilot, on Easy Weddings. Yeah. Wherever you can leave those reviews, True Local, um, OneFlare, Word of Mouth, you can get reviews on all these platforms and they all do help to some extent. So um, if, you know, a lot of brides are on easy weddings, I've got a way that you can get easy wedding reviews from every client. If you've got, you know, brides searching you on Google, I can help you get Google reviews from all your happy customers. And all the reviews on the different platforms like word of mouth, one flare, true local, even though they're not Google, Google's still watching the algorithm, still looking for mentions of your brand or your company name. And when reviews come in on those other trusted platforms, it's still registering. And if you live in a holiday area or a coastal area, then you absolutely need um, TripAdvisor as well. Oh, so yes. So that you get, if you can, get a TripAdvisor profile so that people know to get you for their destination stuff. Yeah, I love that. And one of the things you said there about the click through rate, about getting people to then go onto the website, that's where I come in because this is when I now say to my, when I come in and say to my, to, to the hairdressers and makeup artists out there, if you have a website, you need to capture now your bride's attention. You need to capture your special occasion client's attention. You need to capture, capture your salon guests. It doesn't matter what, what business you have, insert beauty business here. But what Danielle is saying is that the more the more active you are then on Google, it's going to send people to your website, which is great. Yes. We want that click through rate, but then also we want them to spend a little bit of time on your website too, because the amount of time that they spend on your website also, I believe, helps Google as well, because yes. then they're spending a bit of time on that. But we know that people's attention span is short, 
So something I teach, and this is something that I'm going to be teaching um, on the Ultimate Bridal Business Blueprint, the four day live event. This is something I'm going to take the uh, my uh, students through, everyone that attends the program. This is something I'm going to take you through step by step, I'm going to have we create it. But what we do is we create a reason for the clients to stay on the website. Now, this goes by a few different things. Number one, I always tell um, I always tell beauty pros to put their prices on the website. Now, I know lots of people say, no, you know, make people apply for the price. My, here's my theory. Put your price on your website. Anyone who can't afford you is going to disappear. Don't waste time on people that can't, right? People don't have time these days. They want to have a look. They want to go, yes, I can afford them. No, I can't afford them. And if they can, then we want to keep them hooked for a bit longer. And I'm, I can, I'm going to be showing people how to do that. But then those that don't, that's fine. We filter those ones out. They're not worth your time. They're not going to pay your money. That's fine. But when they get to your website, what we want them to do is now we want them to say, we want, we want it to kind of scream, hey, I'm the beauty pro for you. I, I'm going to do you the best hair and makeup that you've ever had. Um, you know, I'm going to live up to those reviews that you've just seen on Google or on Facebook, wherever you've just found me. And I'm going to live up to that by showing you exactly how I can be of benefit. Now, one of the things I talk about in my program is that not every bride is ready to book there and then, which is fine. Not every bride, there are brides who are browsing. They're looking for prices. They are looking at Google reviews. They are, you know, they may find those two, three hair and makeup artists and they all have, you know, a good 50 reviews online and they all seem to do something very similar. The prices may all be similar, but then it's a case of, okay, if I'm now positioning myself, I'm getting some good reviews coming through, Google are sending people my way. What am I going to do over and above on my website? When they hit that website, what am I going to do over and above that no one else is doing? And one of the things I talk about is creating some kind of a lead magnet. So a lead magnet is in very kind of basic terms is giving them something that is going to entice them to connect with you. Now, that could just be that you're giving them a a voucher for hair and makeup if, if you're trying to get somebody in your hair and makeup chair as a beauty pro you want to you know you might offer them a voucher to get started for their first haircut or for their first color for example um if you're a makeup artist and you're freelance if you're a hair hairstylist and you're freelance this might be something like um download my top 10 uh my top 10 beauty tips pre-wedding or download one of the one of the really good ones that works really well i'm giving away my secrets here but one of the really good ones that works is <laughs> uh you know the top five questions you must ask your hair and makeup artist before you book them for your wedding oh my god that's like that's like one of the easiest pieces of, of low-hanging fruit i call it for them to for a makeup art for a uh, bride for example to come to your website they've just seen all these amazing reviews they go to your website and it says, hey, you know, uh, download my top 10 tips here, but you know, you must ask these questions before you, basically before you book me. And it's showing them that you are the authority in your industry, that everything that the brides are telling you about on your Google reviews is genuine and that you are, you are trying to help them first. And it's also kind of it's also helping you, I think, filter again, do a filter of those brides, those re, those brides who are genuine and they do want to book you and they are ready to become a paying customer. Now, it takes some time to get people through. Not everyone turns up to a website and books you straight away. It doesn't always happen that way. Some will, some won't. Um, but that's just a way of them being able to connect with them and getting them to spend that little bit of time on your website. That also helps with SEO, right? Oh, 100%. If people click through to your website and it's just got no content yeah it's it's ugly then they'll click straight back off and that will then send a bad signal to google you want them to be on your website for a good at least a minute at mm. least a minute browsing so that's where on the on your home page your home page is the most important page that's where you would put content that's where you talk a little bit about yourself you might have a video a video is perfect to get them staying there imagine if you had some video clips of you know different shot um, brides and you know yeah, grooms yeah. and different um, services you've been a part of and they stayed there and looked at your work with this sort of little video compilation of photos that you've put together 
Um, as Dawn said, um, a lead magnet, you know, I want those five tips. I'm going to download that. So I'll put my email address in there. Um, you might have a booking calendar, so they might scroll through and have a quick look and see if they've got, you know, the date that you get planning on getting married. Is that available? Um, so all those types of things to keep them looking around your website. And then you've got the different pages like, you know, special occasion makeup, you know, formal makeup. You know, if you're after brides, do not have any, um, you know, special effects makeup yeah. or anything on there. Keep it kind of bridal or um, a little bit of fashion, but more aimed at bridal so they can imagine themselves, not, you know, with body paint and things like that on them. Yes. 100 percent and that's target mark that's a, that's again that's, that, that's your branding your target market and like like you said just having it, it's good to have a few little extra bits on there and i completely agree i'm like if you want to attract brides you need to show your bridal work not show the fact that you can do you know uh runway a, a, yeah runway. exactly because that doesn't appeal to them and that's not to say that you shouldn't have that somewhere in your portfolio you could have a whole page where it just kind of says you know would you like to see you know the other work that i do mm. great which is could be your commercial editorial could be anything like that that but i always think that when it comes to um your kind of everyday bridal hair and makeup even hair dressing that can kind of be because that's part and package you can offer then up you're upselling your brides to getting their hair done as well um so i you know and if you do perhaps if you do beauty as well bridal beauty again you can tie that all into to each other but it's got to be uh, it's got to be aimed at that right target market it's got to make sense yeah it's got to make sense to the people that are going to your site. They don't want to be overwhelmed with 20 different options. Yes. They want to having know too many that, tabs up the top as well. Like want, having tab for this, tab for this. I'm like, that's too much. You want what you said before, um, having having your your uh, homepage, your landing page, that is the most important page for them to go on. Whatever you can kind of put on there, because it, Otherwise, again, like attention span, isn't it? It's to do with attention span. People's attention spans are a lot shorter than what they used to be. Um, and they're more likely just to scroll through the front page than they are to start clicking and trying to work out where their price is and where do I find out more? Mm -hmm. Where are they based? And all this. If you've got it all in front of them on that front page. And then on that home page, that's where you can have, you know, you can have maybe a before and after photo mm. and, and then a sign see more before and after photos here and then they click that and then it goes to the before and after yeah page. which could even be their instagram account if they want to yes yes it which, can be which then which then doubles up with getting people to like and follow and 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 building up social media presence yep so you want them to stay on your website and yeah. not click off and go and check out someone else's website yeah love that oh i'm so excited so yeah. okay let's Let's wrap this up. Let's talk about then what are you going to be uh, teaching in your class coming up in May within the, um, the the Bridal Business Blueprint? What is your class? What are you going to be teaching? And let's talk about the bonus as well. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a run through about your Google My Business, how to set it up. So everything I've just blurted out now, I'll actually, you know, go through it a lot slower. Um, also how to maximize your Google My Business by posting to your Google My Business. You use it like a social media site. Um, and also how the basic structure of a website, just the bare bones. So it's not going to be overwhelming, but just the bare bones on what you need to do on your website and how to get Google reviews how to get them instantly on the spot. So you can end up with three or four reviews every week coming into your Google My Business or to your Facebook or to your Easy Weddings listing or to your TripAdvisor listing. Um, by doing this, you will blow your competition out of the water because no other makeup artists are doing this. They're just not. They're not yeah. confident yeah. enough to be asking and requesting reviews. If you ask for them and make it so easy that the client has nowhere to turn, then they will leave them on the spot. If you ask them and say, hey, could you leave me a review when you get back from your honeymoon? Mm -hmm. Hell no. 
She's had mm, a honeymoon. She's pregnant. Mm. She's going to go back to work. You know, the last thing they're going to be doing is um, doing reviews. And you don't want to ask for a review too late afterwards because that's when they're going to start paying for the bills and all the all the wedding bills are coming in and they're getting stressed because, oh, my God, I've had to pay an extra 3000 for the wedding reception place or, you know, um, I've got to go pay a bond or something back. And all of they'll look back and go, mm, hair and makeup, yeah, it was good. But, you know, gee, I wish I hadn't spent that much money on my hair and makeup. You know, like they start looking at the numbers. My honeymoon cost an extra 10 grand, which I wasn't expecting. So, yeah, get the review while they're super, super happy and in love with the work that you've just done. Excellent. And everyone who joins the uh four day live event in make so become a bride magnet.com you can find all the details there uh, danielle has um we we worked out a really cool bonus which is tell me about the bonus danielle the google review cards yeah tell us about those they're gonna get these so these little beauties are going to give you reviews on the spot from all your happy customers and you're just gonna have to wait and see how they work yeah, it's called the perfect review card for those of you listening on the podcast. And um, it's one of the, the ways that Danielle is using or helping with a lot of her tradies are using exactly this to get more Google reviews. And as we said, they're now being found on Google. Oh, I'm so excited for your class. I know I'm going to learn a lot for myself. So I'm really excited. So thank you so much. Thank you for being uh, on the show with me today as well. Absolute pleasure. I'm so excited. I finally can help some hair and makeup artists make more money. And that yes. is truly exciting. That's yes. what I live, I live for, to watch people succeed. Me too. And I just think it's important that we help our industry. That's as well. I really want to help and elevate the hair and beauty professionals around the world because Google is global. So it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in like we are in Australia or whether you're in the US, the UK, uh, Canada. I know that I, ha I reach a, a wide audience with you guys, but come and join us. Come and join the four day live event. You will not regret it. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I know that the timing is going to be perhaps a little bit difficult for those of you who are overseas. However, um, I'm starting it as early as I possibly can um, here in um, in Australia so that I can cover for those of you who are uh, in the northern hemisphere and we are also going to be recording every single session so even if you miss Danielle's session you will get a recording of that and you still will get the bonuses as well we'll make sure that you get um, the Google review cards as well so Danielle thank you so much I look forward to your class coming up in the next two weeks and um, take care and I shall speak to you soon Thank you so much, Dawn. And I look forward to seeing lots of beautiful faces online. Yeah. Awesome. See you soon. See you.